Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our monthly communion service. It's great to have you with us today. Quite a few of our number are now on holiday. Um, it's got to that season when people who haven't got children are frequently away uh, about, uh, you know, six weeks before those who have. So, um, in particular, our choir and musicians have decided this is... I don't know whether they get cheap rates at this time of the year if you sing in the choir or something, but uh, the musicians and the choir have all decided uh, to go away at this time. So... Um, Uh, One or two of our regular choir members are dotted amongst you, and they will lead you with vigor. uh, But we have no choir here and no choir or or muses over there. So Roger is on the organ as usual at this service, but um, uh, you'll see it's a little bit different from usual. Obviously, the the children are already out in uh, junior church. Um, Just to say, usually, usual things, Fuel Youth Group meets at 5 o'clock. There's some seats down here at the front if, if, if more folk are looking for seats. Or perhaps with Emma at the back there? Do you have other people in your pew, Emma? You don't. <laughs> so uh, the, the, um, the Fuel Youth Group meets on Tuesday at uh, 5 p.m. Here, here in the church building. And um, Tito's and Toys, Wednesday here again as usual. Home groups on Wednesday as usual. Next Wednesday on the 29th, we have a home groups barbecue. Um, If you're not yet a member of one of the groups but would like to take part, then please do speak to Helen. So there's a home groups barbecue, not this week. Let me say that very clearly, not this week. But the following Wednesday, the home groups are getting together for a barbecue. If you're not a home group member, you're very welcome to take part. If you'd like to do that, speak to Helen. Um, in the weekly email, I also did a bit of a, an update on the church de- development plans about the uh, little room we're hoping to insert in the sort of what we call the dead space. It's not going to be called the dead space once there's a room there. Bet- between, between the church and the tower. Um, if you want to talk about that, please speak to Helen or Ivan Jacob or Mark. Or David Pete, but he's on, he's on holiday um, as well, so don't speak to him today. Um, I think that concludes the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, notice now, so I just published the man- bands of marriage between Thomas Childerhouse of this parish and Shelby Barton also of this parish, between Kevin Stewart Benison of this parish and Elaine Marie Jennings of the parish of Coveney in Cambridgeshire. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons severally should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it, and this is for the second time of asking. Well, there being no uh, impediments, just let me say that, as I said, you're very welcome to our communion service. Our stewards will guide you in the usual one-way system. I will administer the bread on this side. You'll be able to receive a small individual cup of wine there um, uh, after that, and then there's the uh, bin here for your disposable cup uh, as, uh, as you come back. No obligation to receive the bread or the wine at all, if you prefer not, of course, but those are the facilities we have. We're going to sing a great uh, hymn of Christian uh, praise, Christian assurance in the gospel. Famous uh, line in the first verse, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Well, that's all of us if we're in the Lord Jesus Christ, ransomed through his death, healed of our sins, restored to fellowship with God, and forgiven for all eternity. So let's stand to sing, praise my soul, the King of heaven.
please sit down. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather at the Lord's table, we must recall the promises and the warnings given to us in the Scriptures. Let us therefore examine ourselves and repent of our sins. Let us give thanks to God for His redemption of the world through His Son, Jesus Christ. And as we remember Christ's death for us and receive this pledge of His love, let us resolve to serve him in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. And so a moment for our recollection before we join together in our prayer. And so together we say, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. We're going to move on to our two readings from the Scriptures uh, now, and Martin is going to read both for us. Thank you, Martin. Please uh, pick up your Bibles and turn to Leviticus chapter 19, and we'll be reading from verses 1 to 18. And you can find that on page 121 of the Church Bibles. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, Be holy, because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Each of you must respect his mother and father, and you must observe my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make gods of cast metal for yourselves. I am the Lord your God. When you sacrifice a fellowship offering to the Lord, sacrifice it in such a way that it will be accepted on your behalf. It shall be eaten on the day you sacrifice it, or on the next day. Anything left over until the third day must be burned up. If any of it is eaten on the third day, it is impure and will not be accepted. Whoever eats it will be held responsible because he has desecrated what is holy to the Lord. That person must be cut off from his people. When you reap the harvest of your, of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Do not go over your vineyard a second time or pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. Do not steal, do not lie, do not deceive one another. Do not swear falsely by my, my name and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Do not defraud your neighbor or rob him. Do not hold back the wages of a hired man overnight. Do not curse the death or put a stumbling block in front of the blind, but fear your God. I am the Lord. Do not pervert justice. Do not show partiality to the poor or favoritism to the great, but judge your neighbor fairly. Do not go about spreading slander among your people. Do not do anything that endangers your neighbor's life. I am the Lord. Do not hate your brother in your heart. 
Rebuke your neighbour frankly so that you will not share in his guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbour as yourself. I am the Lord. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. And our second reading is from Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 36. And that can be found, as you can see, on page 1034. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who ill-treat you. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your rewards will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Thank you, Martin. And uh, we're going to sing again now that the Lord will speak to us through his word as Mark comes to uh, preach on it for us in a moment. We're going to sing uh, the hymn, Now in reverence and awe we gather round your word. Let's stand to sing.
Well, please sit down. And let's, uh, let's pray before we look at uh, that passage from Luke. Lord Jesus, uh, please teach us from your word. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, imagine you needed to do a lot of photocopying, okay? Can you imagine this with me? You need to do a lot of photocopying. Holly and the anchor team know lots about photocopying, don't you? Yeah? Are your photocopiers in good shape? Yeah? Just now? Good. Um, anyway, let's say you needed to do a lot of photocopying and you, you bought a lovely looking photocopier. It had lots of great features on it. It could do double-sided. It could do color. It could do A3. Ooh. It could collate. Oh, it could sort them all in, into the right piles. Um, it could make booklets. It could staple. It could do all the cool things that a photocopier can do. But there was something not quite right about this photocopier, because every time you copied something, whether color copying or in grayscale, it didn't copy the whole document or photo, okay? It didn't copy the whole document or photo that you were trying to copy. It copied some of it, but it also left several large blank areas around the document. Now, let me ask you, what would you do with that photocopier? What would you do with that photocopier? Get an engineer out, yeah? Get on the service line, yeah? Because you're paying through the nose for this lovely photocopier. You'd get it fixed. Well, the people of Israel at the time Jesus was teaching in the first century were bad copiers. They were bad copiers. For they called themselves the people of God. They were proud of their tradition, their ancestors. But their hearts, or their fruit didn't show them to be the people of God. They weren't brilliant at copying their Father in heaven. They weren't brilliant at copying their Father in heaven. And their leaders hadn't helped. Their leaders hadn't helped. For the grace of God in the Old Testament had become riddled with man-made traditions. Lots of human framework imposed on the truth. Lots of man's ideas, along with Scripture, which is always very dangerous. The religious leaders of the day set the example and teaching to the people, and we get a pretty good picture from other New Testament passages that they themselves weren't good shepherds of the people of God. Here in our passage from Luke, when Jesus was teaching, love your enemy, he was saying what had already been said in the Old Testament from the second half of the Ten Commandments. How to deal with other people. How do, you, how do you act towards other people? How do you love them? And Martin read that passage from Leviticus. How the people were to love their neighbors. We don't find the commandments saying, don't steal from the people you get on with, do we? We just read, do not steal, full stop. But it seems that in first century Israel, there was a pick and mix of who the commands applied to. The religious leaders were good at making exceptions to God's commands. So on the topic of loving their enemies, let's just think of the parable of the Good Samaritan. The religious leaders in the parable didn't help the man laying on the street. It was an enemy of Israel, a Samaritan, who helped the man. It should come as no surprise to us how Jesus rebuked the religious leaders of the day so often. But now the people had Jesus around, the good shepherd the greatest Bible teacher ever, the one who wrote the book, who knew exactly what it said, and here we read that he was teaching a large crowd on a level plane. That's what our series is on, isn't it? This teaching, the large crowd on a level plane. 
And when he said to the crowd, love your enemies, it really would have come as a big shock to them. For these are the standards of the kingdom of heaven. These aren't the world standards. This is kind of topsy-turvy. This is turn it all on its head. These are kingdom, kingdom standards, unpolluted by the Pharisees, undiluted by men, not passed through fallen human filters. No, this was God's Word from God the Son, and these were the standards of His kingdom. So our first heading today is Be Good News to Others. Be Good News to others. Let me read uh, from uh, the passage again, verses 27 to 31. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Easy list, yeah? Easy list to follow? This passage is not hard to understand, is it? It's not a tricky passage. It's hard to put it into action, isn't it? Do good to those who hate you. Do good. Bless those who curse you. Bless them. Pray for those who mistreat you. Pray for them. Now, just to, just to say that these verses are not for governments on how to run police forces or armed forces, okay? Our government needs to maintain order and protect people. The Ukrainians in the trenches and on the streets of their battered cities right now, are defending themselves and their families, rightly so, and it's right for other countries to support them against unprovoked invasion. So this is not saying just lay down and let people walk all over you in those situations. Okay? These verses are for us as the people of God on how we interact as individuals to other individuals how we interact as a church to the world. And the teaching here is, don't have an attitude like the world. Don't retaliate. That's the big thing, isn't it? Don't get even. Don't try and get even. Don't try and retaliate. Have a different attitude. Have kingdom attitude. attitude. Do the opposite thing. Do the kingdom of heaven thing. Love them, whoever they are. And just a, a little reminder that love doesn't mean we have mushy feelings for those who hate us. Love is about our actions towards them. But it's not easy, is it? We're so used to the world's way, our own fallen, selfish way to hit back. It's much, it's much easier to hit back, isn't it? To come, come back with a quick comment. It's very easy to try and come out on top, to win, to prove ourselves right. I didn't say that. Whatever the situation, we need to think about how we are good news to that person or to those people. How are we good news in that situation? We can ask ourselves, can't we? How am I going to be good news here? How am I going to show love and mercy? Perhaps we can get into a habit of sending an arrow prayer to God in tricky situations. Please help me, Father, to be kind and to be good news here. Now, you might be thinking... Well, I don't have any enemies, Mark. I'm tip-top. Everyone loves me. Well, that's great news for you. 
But, but life in a fallen world isn't perfect all the time, is it? Situations where we need to apply this can happen even though we may not have enemies, you know. Out on the roads, can happen there, can't it? Out on the roads, in the comfort and the security of your centrally locked car. In the supermarket's car park, parking can happen there. In the supermarket itself, in the aisles, in our street where we live, over parking or grass cutting, those verges, or people parking on the verges, ruining the grass, or an overhanging tree into our property which blocks a bit of light, or loud music next door until late. Maybe things can happen closer than that. A distant relative being unkind to another relative, and you're rightly concerned about the situation. So you get involved. What happens? Things might escalate. I could go on, couldn't I? Things can get complicated quite quickly. Life can be very tricky, and we're not in a perfect little bubble away from it all. There's also the fact that if we're Christians and living as God's people, we will have people who hate us, who persecute us. Jesus warned his disciples on this, didn't he? It's hard. It's, it's not hard for issues which are popular in society now to meet us in the playground or down the pub or at the annual family get-together. Topics where the world takes an opposite view from the Bible will put us in situations that are not easy if we are following the Lord Jesus. So in all these situations, we need to ask ourselves how we can be good news to people, okay? Rather than conflict, rather than getting even or hitting back, how can we be good news to people and to pray for God's help on being good news to them? Not easy commands to follow, are they? But there's a massive motivation for us apart from the fact that Jesus commands us, okay? So the massive motivation is that, our second point, thanks Emma, for you have received good news from God. So be good news to others, for you have received good news from God. These commands in Luke chapter 6 are about us applying to others what God himself has already done for us. Isn't that right? These commands are about us applying to others what God himself has already done for us. Verses 35 and 36. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High because He is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. These commands are about us being like our Father in heaven, aren't they? God is merciful, so we should be merciful. They're not about us earning our favor with God. That's impossible. They remind us that God loved us first. God loved the unlovely. God loved his enemies. While we were still sinners, God loved us. Because God the Son stepped off his throne, took on human flesh to stand in our place, to deal with our sin on the cross. And if that's news to you, if you want to know more about that, then please speak to myself or Robert afterwards. But God has stepped off the throne. He's done something about it. He's loved his enemies. 
God is merciful. Let's remember that when we're tempted to treat someone by the world's standards. We might think, well, I know who I'm going to be loving towards on this street. Those who live at number two, those who live at number three, those who live at number four, not those at number five, and definitely not those at number six. Number six just don't have a chance. Remember the mercy we have all received from God. Thankfully, God isn't like us when it comes to loving people. He doesn't exclude people like we often do. Maybe we're good at pushing the boat out with just a few people who we like. Well, I don't mind giving to them because they give to us. Or maybe in your street you think, I don't mind putting their bins out because they put our bins out. We may give because we get. We're often tempted to do the minimum with everything, aren't we? To do the stuff that doesn't cost our time or money or energy. It's easy, as Jesus says, to do good to those who do good to you. You don't have to go far to find like-minded people being nice to each other. You don't, do you? You can join a bowling club to find that. Or you can join a walking club. Whatever club you want, you join the club. You know, you could join a political party. They'll feel like nice, big, happy families for a, a large part. But we're not just to do good to those who do good to us. We're to remember our Father in heaven who does good to all. He sustains all. He sent his Son to his enemies to bring them back forgiven. So let's just ask ourselves, sitting in our pews today, do we, or you can, you can ask yourself this, do I, do we love God perfectly? No. Are we always good to God? No. Are we able to repay God for all that He has given us? All He has forgiven us? No. Why then do we produce bad copies so often? Why are we unmerciful when our Father in heaven is so merciful to all? Perhaps we forget the good news that has happened to us. We're never going to be perfect in these bodies. We're not perfect in this area, as we're not perfect in every other area of our lives. But we have God the Holy Spirit, God's, God Himself, helping us. Let's keep looking to our Father in heaven and keep trusting and remembering the good news that He has already revealed to us, that we're His children, safe forever in the Lord Jesus, and when we stand before him on that day of judgment, our record will be perfect because it's Jesus' record that has been grant gifted to us. He has met the standard. He has been perfect in mercy. Thank you, Jesus. And let that truth motivate us to apply to others what God has already applied to us. Be good news to others, for you have received good news from God. So just to finish, back to think, thinking about that photocopier we all bought. Remember the photocopier we all bought? Remember the one that had lots of blank areas in every copy? Well, we're a bit like that, aren't we, ourselves? We're a bit like that photocopier. As God's people trusting in Christ, we copy Jesus. We are to be perfect like Him, like our Father in heaven. But while we're in this body, we don't 
copy perfectly, do we? We don't copy perfectly. But if we're in Christ, if we trust in Jesus, then we live by grace. And by grace, we keep on copying our Father in heaven. By grace, we keep copying more and more. We keep trusting and following. And by grace, we show the world something of God's love and mercy. Sometimes, we will have a paper jam. And sometimes, we'll be able to make out what we were actually copying, and it will probably come as a surprise to us. But that's God's grace. But the copiers that keep on copying are those who know that even if their copies are pretty poor, God will never change. He won't get rid of them. He'll never get rid of them. He will always love them because Jesus has saved them. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we pray that you would help us to be good news to others rather than uh, lower ourselves to the world standards and try and retaliate. Father, we pray that you would help us by your Spirit to be good news in whatever situation we face. Help us to remember that we have received good news from you. Help us always to remember the undeserved mercy that we've all received from you in the Lord Jesus. We ask this in his name. Amen. Mark has said, help us to remember the undeserved mercy which we've all received uh, in Jesus' name. And of course, the Lord's Supper is there to help us to do just that, to help us all remember the mercy which we've received in his name. Well, we're going to join together in the creed now, so do please stand. And uh, on the inside of the service order, you'll find uh, the Nicene Creed to remind us of our Christian faith. So together we say, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. 
He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, do please uh, uh, sit down now, and our intercessions are led for us by Lucy Brown. We're now going to pray for our world, our village, and for our fathers and for our church family activities. I'll invite you to join me at the end of each section with the words, Lord, in your mercy, to which we can all say, hear our prayer. So let us pray. Our Lord, we pray for our world. We hear of wars, of rumours of wars. We know there are national elections and lots of things going on in the world. We lift up all the world events and we pray for Christian, as Christians that we will all know that you are the king of the whole world and that you care about the big and the small. We pray that in whatever circumstance people find themselves, that everyone might put their trust in you, the creator, the sustainer and giver of all good things. We especially pray for refugees fleeing danger and in particular that they will find safety and the love of a local community of believers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our village. We give thanks for the way that we were able to celebrate the Jubilee together and for all of the things that happened that weekend. We pray that the fruit of welcome and um, fellowship and friendship that started then would continue that we would be known as a community of believers who are welcoming and generous. We pray also for students at this time facing a season of exams. We pray for them and their families. We pray that they would not become too stressed. We pray that you would grant them good health and time to study well. But Lord, we pray that their identity would be firmly rooted in something more important than success or achievement. And we pray that for believers, their identity would be firmly rooted in you so that whatever their exam results are, they would know that they are no more loved or no less loved, whatever happens. We pray particularly today for fathers. We thank you for the gift of our earthly fathers, for all the good things they do in thought and word and deed to bless their families and community. We pray that you will uphold fathers in their God-given role to act in godly ways. We especially pray for families where this is a difficult day, that your Holy Spirit will comfort them. May we all know the blessing of knowing you, our perfect Heavenly Father. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our okay. prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift up our church activities that are coming up this week for fuel, tea, toast and toys, the home groups, men's social, the ladies' book group. And we pray that in all our gatherings, we would be pointing one another to you, that we would be showing love and generosity of God. And as Mark has reminded us, that we would be looking to bring good news in our circumstances. We pray for our leaders of these groups that you would sustain them in their work for the sake of the gospel. We pray for this sermon series that we're doing in Luke where we're looking at Jesus' teaching on the plain. And we pray that it would speak into our hearts, that it would motivate us to see your perfect standards, our response to you, how Jesus has done it all, and how we can live in your grace to be good news to those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And to end our prayers, I will read the Church of England prayer for today. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our own moral nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace 
that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Lucy, very much indeed. Would you stand, please? Well, the Lord Jesus has won us peace. He is our peace with God through his work on the cross, through his mercy shown to us, unlovely us. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. Let's uh, offer one another a sign of peace. If you'd rather not uh, have physical contact, be ready just to give a little wave. But let's uh, offer one another a sign of peace. sing again now. We're going to sing, and our next song is a modern version of an old one, which reflects on the mercy which we're going to be remembering as we come to the Lord's table. In the first verse, we'll sing, Beneath the cross of Jesus, I find a place to stand and wonder at such mercy that calls me as I am. For hands that should discard me hold wounds which tell me, Come, beneath the cross of Jesus, my unworthy soul is one. And then in the second verse, we'll sing of how the cross is a rebuke to any selfishness we might have amongst us in our own relationships as a, as a church. Beneath the cross of Jesus, his family is my own. One strangest chasing selfish dreams, now one through grace alone. How could I now dishonor the ones that you have loved? Beneath the cross of Jesus, see the children called by God. So a great hymn, our choir, our spread amongst us. Let's all sing up as we sing this great hymn, Beneath the Cross of Jesus.
Let us pray. We sit. So together we say, we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that we, receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is the great hymn, To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world in our unloveliness that he gave us, his son who yielded his life an atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all, however sinful we are, and we're all sinful, that all may go in. Let's stand to sing the praise of our great saving God. And do please sit for our final prayer. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this tremendous reminder in your supper of your great mercy to us in the Lord Jesus, dying in our place as the atonement for our sins. We pray that we may be mindful of your word which we have heard this morning, that we may go out following the standards of the kingdom of God, 
being merciful to those around us, just as you have been merciful to us. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm.